Hello, and welcome to Your Money 2.0. I'm Thomas Fox, Community Outreach Director of Cambridge Credit Counseling. The English poet Alexander Smith once remarked, a man's real possession is his memory. In nothing else is he rich, in nothing else is he poor. Some emerging research on the relationship of consumption and happiness shows that Mr. Smith may have been on to something. For centuries, we've thought that a little extra cash makes our lives easier. Studies over the last few decades have shown that money, up to a certain point, makes people happier because it lets them meet their basic needs. However, the new research on happiness paints a much different picture. Jody Kirobach's report, Money Giveth, Money Taketh Away, The Dual Effect of Wealth on Happiness, which appeared in the August 2010 issue of Psychological Science, has found that although wealth provides opportunities to purchase many things, it simultaneously impairs our ability to enjoy those things. The new research differs from prior studies because it focuses on the emotional impact of our purchases in an attempt to determine which provides us with the most happiness. For instance, researchers have discovered that people are happier when they spend money on experiences rather than on material objects because they strengthen our self-esteem and social bonds. In that sense, at least, this conclusion is consistent with earlier studies of happiness, which have determined that self-esteem and social bonds are important aspects of the joy we derive from life. The unique aspect of the later research is that it focuses specifically on the effects of the purchases we make. Apparently, paying for experiences gives us longer lasting happiness because, later on, we can reminisce about them. If you take a moment to think about it, this surprisingly simple observation makes perfect sense. For instance, over the last four years I've made my fair share of purchases. I would guess that at least a few may have given me some amount of joy, but I really can't recall any of them distinctly in that way. On the other hand, I clearly remember a camping trip I went on with friends. Although that trip was relatively inexpensive, the experience of spending time with good friends is a treasured memory. The reason that purchases provide less joy than experiences has to do with the principle psychologists call hedonic adaptation. This is similar to the premise that time heals all wounds, except it applies to both positive and negative circumstances. Hedonic adaptation allows people to quickly adjust to changes, great or terrible, in order to maintain a stable level of happiness. Over time, that means the joy from a new purchase is pushed towards the emotional norm. Therefore, we stop getting pleasure from it. Then, of course, we buy new things. A professor of psychology at the University of California concluded a recent article on the subject with a fitting analysis. Happiness is a choice. We can choose to become never satisfied janitors of our possessions, or we can use our money in ways to improve our worlds and, as a bonus, supply us with genuine and long-lasting well-being. If we look back over the last few years, what have our purchases done for us? Many of us have tried to keep up with the Joneses in pursuit of bigger homes, the latest technology, and a host of other possessions while compromising our futures in the process. As a country, we manage titanic amounts of debt, which as we've discovered, really hasn't brought us much happiness in return. That's an experience we can all learn from, and if we do, there might be some good to come out of this recession after all. Well, that's it for this edition. As always, we welcome your feedback and ask for your thoughts and suggestions by emailing us at yourmoney2 at cambridgecredit.org. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm Thomas Fox for Cambridge Credit Counseling.